When I say youth, you say speaks. Youth speaks. Youth speaks. And we go by the water. I gotta go hard, hard. Me, I gotta go hard, hard. I gotta go hard, hard. Me, I gotta go hard, hard. I gotta go hard, hard. Me, I gotta go hard, hard. I gotta go hard, hard. We want you to be you. This is all about you today. I'm so happy you guys are here. Have fun. Make it the best day ever. And if you're kind of shy, step up. Today we're trying to create a safe atmosphere for you. So take risks. Girl, you hella sexy. And I ask why. Why not beautiful, intelligent, sophisticated? No. At the age of 15, while I was in high school, uh, when I was in 10th grade, I was shot. Um, three times to walk home from school. That's when I began to take my craft serious. All the negative stuff that was happening, it was like consuming my mind and I wasn't really like thinking about school at the time. I wish we had this back then and maybe I wouldn't been shot. It's better than writing an essay. It's better than reading a book. It's just more than what, it really, what everything else is. It's a special kind of literature that's just unique. Sacramento area youth speaks. School is my hustle. You could see it this morning. The dancing, the applause, the respect. The positive energy, the drive, the passion they have for life, it's, uh, it's infectious, it's wonderful. In my school, they never taught me to be proud of being Rasa. They never had Mexican studies, Rasa studies. They never said, I couldn't even speak Spanish in school. Me and Cesar, I'm hearing about all the things that he's done for everybody. Um, kind of, he became my hero today. And makes me want to do more for my community and myself. So I've been told that there are 300 plus youth all together. What can we do to make sure you young people vote when it's your turn, when you become of age? That's my first question. Start giving us representatives to show our voice so we don't think politics is a pointless routine. Okay, so she said continue to change enough so that we believe that change can happen and we'll be engaged in the process. Exercise that. A lot of the poets inspired me. Uh, got me thinking about writing poetry too. Yeah, I mean that's why I think a lot of teachers are excited because they're like, you know what? Once we open up this aspect of it, you know, this other aspect is going to be a little bit more easier to, for them to grasp. It speaks to something greater than spoken word. It speaks to something greater than poetry. It speaks to. 
it speaks to where where we are in the world right now and how young people see that because young people aren't going to stay young forever. Like our reality is that we have to go and struggle to to make our way to be what we want to be. We put emotions into poetry, not just writing something down in essays, talking about it, talking like you're a lawyer. It helps to promote a, a healthy lifestyle of reflection and, um, and, and just really processing things. As an administrator, I see that what I can do with this type of avenue of educating students is multifold. One, as a principal, I see that I can work with my staff and show teachers that this is the way you can really empower the children in the campus and make their education relevant to them as well as to their families and to our, our site. They get this, they hear it from their students that this should be part of their educational experience and we think it should be part of their educational experience as well so we're looking to be as supportive as possible and, and that's why I'm here hanging out and helping out as much as I can. So we have the leaders of the future right here within our grasp. I look forward to UC Davis developing this, um, Crest Center and Visor really continuing this work so that we can make sure that we are pipelining our kids right into college and they'll be the speakers and leaders of the future. They won't be afraid to grab the mic, that's for sure.